गुड मॉर्निंग लर्नर्स टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट विद द फर्स्ट पोएम फ्रॉम आर सिलेबस द रोड नॉट टेकन बाय रॉबर्ट फ्रॉस्ट नाउ रॉबर्ट फ्रॉस्ट वॉज एन अमेरिकन पोएट एंड रोड नॉट टेकन इज़ वन ऑफ इज मोस्ट फेमस पोएम्स एंड वन ऑफ माई मोस्ट लव्ड पोएम्स ऑफ ऑल टाइम्स लेट्स सी अ लिटल बैकग्राउंड ऑफ द पोएम फर्स्ट टू अंडरस्टैंड वॉट दिस पोएम इज ऑल अबाउट राइट So the road not taken this poem was first published in 1916 by Robert Frost. It is a narrative poem that supports individualism and the philosophy or the idea that being your own person is the way is the best way to lead one's life. Now what does this mean? What does the word individualism mean? It means that every person, every individual, every human being has their own choices in life every individual is a person in their own right so they make their own choices based on uh, the decisions that they take in life right okay so now let's take a look at the poem first what you can do right now is that you can pause the video right here and read the poem on your own or else you can read it with me as i read two roads diverged in a yellow wood and sorry i could not travel both and be one traveler long i stood and looked down one as far as i could to where it bent in the undergrowth then took the other as just as fair and having perhaps the better claim because it was grassy and wanted wear though as far as the passing there had warned them really about the same and both that morning equally lay in leaves no step had trodden black oh I kept the first for another day yet knowing how way leads on to way I doubted if I should ever come back I shall be telling this with a sigh somewhere ages and ages hence two roads diverged in a wood and I I took the one less traveled by and that has made all the difference okay so now that you've read the poem let's discuss what the poem is all about Here is a brief overall summary you can pause the uh, video right now and you can read it let me explain what this poem is all about so uh, our narrator he comes upon a fork in the road while walking through a yellow wood wood means forest and our narrator is walking through a dense forest it is yellow in color it means that the season is the autumn season the leaves are falling the forest looks completely dried yellow it's not at all green right and he is uh, he comes across a point uh, where he has to choose between two paths there are two different ways there are two different paths and our narrator has to choose between those two ways those two paths that he sees in front of him right so he considers both those paths and he tells himself that he can come back to this fork one day he can come back and he can choose the other one whichever way he chooses right now he can come back and he can choose the other path later in his life but you know like when you take one decision in your life you move ahead and you make further a lot more decisions in life it is impossible for you to go back and you know make the other decision that you did not take the first time and same thing happens with our narrator with our poet right he realizes that it is very unlikely it is not possible that he can come back and uh, that he will ever get the opportunity to come back to this specific point this specific place and take the decision uh, to choose the other path which he is not choosing right now right um so uh, there is a choice between our, uh, between the two roads in front of our narrator in front of our poet and he chooses the road which is less traveled upon right he chooses the road which looks uh, less trodden upon by people he chooses the way which not many people choose right so he tries to choose a path which is very unconventional which not a lot of people uh, go by so he makes his decision he takes this decision finally picks the road that is less traveled by and the narrator ends the poem wondering how different things will change after he chose his path in the end he is you know thinking about the decision that he made that day and he is thinking about it with a sigh and he is thinking what could have happened had i chosen the the other path right now uh, this is a brief overview of the poem let's go on to the first stanza second stanza and then the third stanza let's understand what the poem uh, means let's go on to the first stanza two roads diverged in a yellow wood and sorry i could not travel both and be one traveler long i stood and looked down one as far as i could 
to where it bent in the undergrowth. So the speaker, look at the first line. It says the two roads diverged in a yellow wood. There are two roads, there are two ways, there are two paths. And these two paths represent the choices, the two different choices that a poet comes uh, that the poet comes across in his life, right? Uh, the speaker wants to go down both the roads at once, but it is impossible to walk down two roads at once, so he has to choose one road. It generally happens in your lives also, right? That uh, you come across a point wherein you have two choices in life, but you have to choose any one path, and you don't know what would have happened had you chosen the other one. So uh, similarly, the poet also chooses chooses one path and moves ahead. He's sorry that he can't travel both roads. Sorry means that he's feeling bad about it. He's feeling bad that he cannot travel both roads. Uh, and he, he suggests that he's feeling a, 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 a little bit of regret, a little bit of uh, sadness that he could not travel on both the roads. And because of the impossibility of traveling on both roads, the speaker stands there trying to choose which path he's going to take. I'm going to introduce a word to you here. The word is dilemma, D-I-L-E-M-M-A. Find out the meaning of the word uh, by yourself and see how the poet is facing dilemma here. I will tell you my own meaning, uh, my own interpretation of the word. Uh, dilemma means when you have a very difficult choice between any two given options and you're not able to choose. So the mental state that you are in, that's called the state of dilemma, right? So the, uh, the poet right now is at a phase in his life where he has to choose between two paths and he is facing a dilemma right now. He is very confused. So the speaker tries to choose a path by staring down the roads. He's looking at the roads very clo uh, closely. He's trying to compare both the roads. And he's trying to see where it goes. But he can only see up to the first bend, the first place where the road bends. He can only see till there, where the undergrowth starts. So one of the way, uh, he's uh, looking at the way, which is going straight. And there's a little bend. And now then uh, after that, it goes towards the undergrowth. The small plants and greenery of the woods prevent him from seeing where it leads. So right now, at the point in which, at which he is standing, he cannot see what will come off the roads that he will take. Right now, he cannot see what this decision will bring uh, um, for him in his life. But what he can do right now is that he can look at both the roads, compare both the roads and choose one. Right? Uh, let's move on to the second stanza. Then took the other just as fair and having perhaps the better claim because it was grassy and wanted wear though as for the passing there had warned them really about the same so uh, he says that he took the other the other road he took the other road as just as fair so this road was just as fair it was similar to the first road and having perhaps the better claim but he says that maybe this road has a better claim this road has a uh, this road a road, a road uh, provides uh, presents before him a better opportunity because it was grassy. There was a lot of grass on this path and wanted wear. So this road wanted people to, you know, uh, travel by it and it wanted people to travel through uh, the road. This road wanted wear. To wear is uh, to, you know, um, get used up by something, by use, usage. Though as for as the passing there had warned them really about the same. So the poet is kind of contradicting himself here. In the first line, he says that uh, both the roads are just as fair. They look very similar. And then he goes on to say that the other road is uh, perhaps better. It uh, gives him a better opportunity. And towards the end, you see, he says that uh, both the roads were really, have a worn, uh, really in the same manner. So let's read the, the explanation. When he says as just as fair, we are guessing that he means that road is just as pretty. But... Uh, in the metaphorical word of this poem, he thinks that he made the fair or right choice, right? So, um, if we go by uh, these two roads and if we think of them not as roads but as decisions in one's life, you could see that he made a fair decision because that uh, road presented a better opportunity, a better call in front of him. But it's not fairer, it's just as fair. So, he was choosing between two roads or futures that were different potentially but potentially equally good. So, uh, when he uh, is asked to choose one road, he is, you know, going forward uh, and choosing a future for himself. And he, as a poet says, that both of them presented nearly equally potentially good future for him. The speaker still seems pretty uncertain. Uncertain means unsure. Uncertain when he explains that this second path is better. It is only perhaps better. Perhaps means maybe. 
so he says that maybe this way is better he is not really sure but he is going by his instinct he is choosing the second way just when he thinks about which path is better he changes his mind and admits that maybe they were equal after all so the this stanza shows you how confused our poet is at one point of time he thinks that one road uh, lays a better claim the other point of time he says that uh, you know maybe they are both just as fair and again he says that uh, they are really one about the same i told you that he is contradicting himself contradicting means to say opposite things and why is he saying opposite things because he is confused he is confused as to which way to choose like i told you he is in a dilemma to uh, you know he does not know what way to choose then the speaker tells us why the path is better where it seems like it hasn't been walked on very much because it is grassy and does not look worn so just imagine there are two ways on one way a lot of people walk on right a lot of people trod on one way a lot of people walk upon it and then there is another way uh, not a lot uh, traveled by so this way is grassier is greener so the poet wants to choose the path which is greener after he thinks about one road which he's looked down for a long time the speaker takes the other path like i told you he takes the other path in the end let's move on to the third stanza and both that morning equally lay in leaves no step had trodden black oh i kept the first for another day yet knowing how way leads on to way i doubted if i should ever come back like i told you both that morning equally lay both refers to both the ways and they lay equally they were there in front of him both the choices were very close very equal very similar right so this stanza is saying that leaves cover both the roads equally no one on this morning has yet taken either road because the leaves lie undisturbed if you look at uh, the description of the leaves here it says that in leaves no step had trodden black when you t- t- trod me is uh, means to walk upon right so no step meaning no human being has walked upon these paths so the leaves are completely clean they are not black they are not blackened by people's uh, feet by people's shoes so they are completely new they are completely uh, uh, yellow uh, and grassy so both these paths are equally not trodden by people oh i kept the first for another day so he kept the first for another day and he chose the second one like we told you the speaker remains committed to his decision to take the road he had previously selected saying that he will save the other road for another day so he feels that he will save the first road for another day that he will come back to the road and then choose the first one he observes that he probably will never pass this way again and thus will never have the opportunity to take the other road but he is a very thoughtful person he knows that if he uh, you know takes that one the the second road he will never be able to come back to this point of his life and then make the other decision just imagine that you are 14 years old or you are 12 years old right and you make one decision today whatever decision you make will shape the way your future will be you can never come back to this age to this point in time when you are 12 when you are 14 and you cannot take the other decision right it just uh, is not possible the overall message of this stanza is that in any life decision we can comfort our decisions by thinking that we can come back try a different option later however sometimes our decisions lead us to other decisions and it is impossible for us to retrace our steps and arrive back at the original decision look at the last four lines yet knowing how way leads on to way meaning one decision leads leads to the other decisions subsequent decisions so he says that i doubted if i should ever come back all right now that we have discussed the poem and we have analyzed the poem let's see the setting of the poem what do we what do we mean by the setting the setting is the place in which the poem is set in this case like i told you uh, the setting is the yellow woods woods means forest right so the first line tells you two roads diverged in a yellow wood this line itself tells you the setting right uh, the trees and the branches are the plot devices right the woods didn't allow the speaker to see the end of the road and this is uh, the thing that sets the plot the setting of the poem uh, look at the second point during fall time fall means autumn uh, how do we know that this is autumn because all the leaves are yellow in color the forest looks completely yellowish right so that's how we know that this is fall season uh, the wood is yellow in color in leaves no step had trodden black leaves were fallen along the paths and this tells you that 
uh, the the season was autumn now the autumn season does not only represent the autumn season of the woods it also represents the autumn season of one's own life uh, i'll explain it to you later what do we mean by that what do we mean by the autumn season in one's life after the setting let's look at the symbolism in the poem the symbols uh, the words that the poets use in their poems do not only mean uh, what they literally mean there are uh, there are also hidden meanings symbols in these uh, words that the poets use right so uh, in terms of season it is autumn season how do we know i already told you that this is a yellow wood right uh, in if you look at one's life spring season denotes rebirth renewal fresh beginnings because every new flower every new fruit grows uh, every new flower grows in the spring season and every uh, the the air is fresh and everything right so this could be the childhood the summer is full of passion emotion romance uh, this could be the adulthood when uh, the things are very summery very fresh uh, the autumn time denotes uh, the middle age the age where you need to make the most difficult decisions of your life and you know um, the decisions such as what job to do what career to uh, make uh, whether to study or not to study who to marry or not to marry this is the age the middle age where you become uh, more uh, intelligent more thoughtful and more down to earth right so you become quiet calm and you make the most important decisions of your life at at this point of time uh, therefore autumn does not only refer to the seasons autumn also refers to the age of the poet right for every road taken there is at least one road which is not taken this is very true if you take one decision in life there is always the other decision that you did not take which could have shaped your way your future in another manner right roads represent a life decision like i told you the roads represent a life decision these roads are not just roads or ways these are important life decisions that you take right the end of each road represents the outcome the end of each road also represents the future the things that you cannot see right now so uh, if today you choose to study really hard in class 9 you don't know what the future will be you don't know what future decisions you will be, you will be taking maybe you will become a really successful person and you will have to take uh, many more decisions like that there could be the other decision the decision to not study and then you will shape your way, life in another manner right so uh, uh, the roads also bring with them a future which is not known something that is unknown and the significance is the speaker was indecisive because he could not see the end of the road he did not know what the future is going to be like so the speaker was really unsure about his decisions which decision to take when moving ahead we have the themes let's discuss the main themes in the poem like i told you the choice the roads represent the choice that choices that you have in life the choices that you make regularly the decisions he was at a crossroad right the crossroads represent the four, the two uh, or four different ways in which you can go so the speaker was at a crossroad when it came uh, when it came to a major life choice each choice would have been equally good but he chose the second choice the other one he had a major major decision to make when he decided to be a poet so you can um, see it in this way that he decided to be a poet and this was the major decision that he took uh, another theme is possibilities what could have happened had i taken the other way you don't know what could have happened right so he kept wondering what if what if i took the other way what if so the poet keeps on wondering about the possibilities uh of him choosing the other decision him making uh, him choosing the other road making the other decision he keeps on wondering what would have happened what if i would have chosen the other road now that we've discussed the setting the major themes the symbolism in the poem now let's come back co- come back to the poem and discuss the poetic devices used in our poem uh um, you already know what poetic devices are these are the devices that are used to enhance the poem to uh, make them look or sound even more beautiful the first poetic device very common is the imagery an imagery is a visually descriptive or figurative language in a literary work uh, this literary work here we uh, that we are uh, doing right now is a poem so uh, imagery is a word it could be a visual imagery it could be a auditory image an auditory imagery a visual imagery uh would be a word which will create an image in your minds and auditory imagery will be a word that will create a sense of sound in your mind right 
to look at the line and i looked down one as far as i could to where it bent in the undergrowth so this line paints a picture in our head the the very picture of a road that is bent towards the undergrowth uh, it makes a picture uh, creates a picture of a very long path ahead of the speaker and this uh, line contains imagery look at the uh, the other line two roads diverged in a yellow wood so this line describes an image of a road branching into two different roads we have another example uh, and both that morning equally lay in leaves no step had trodden black this line paints us a picture of the poem's setting it also gives you a picture that uh, the uh, leaves were not black in color so the leaves were yellowish in color so the colors uh, like yellow and black show you uh, help you to create an image of the forest in your uh, minds right moving ahead we have assonance which we will not uh, look into but we have personification what is personification personification is the act of giving human characteristics to non human beings so if i say that the chair was very tired you know that the chair cannot be tired right it is a non living thing but if i say that the chair is tired it means that i am giving it human qualities i am make i am giving it qualities which a person would have look at this line because it was grassy and wanted wear uh, the poet is saying that the the road the way wanted uh, to get worn to for the people to walk on it but you know like a way cannot want something because it is not a human being right the path wanted wear but a path can path cannot want only humans can want so this qualifies as personification now uh, looking at metaphor metaphor is um, one of the most important literary devices that you will come across metaphor is a figure of speech in which a word or phrase is applied to a person idea or object to which it is not literally applicable so the poet is comparing the paths in life to the choices one must make both the roads both the paths are metaphors for the life choices the life decisions that one has to make and this is the strongest metaphor which is used throughout the poem the poem speaks of the actual choices in life as roads one must choose to take so the roads represent the life decisions this is the metaf- metaphor metaphorically the roads simply represent choices in life like i told you right okay now let's see the overall theme and message that this poem gives you the road not taken is not a not a very uh, casual sort of a poem right it's not about someone who's taken a stroll through the woods and looking at the way and choosing which way to take it's not like that it's not like a morning walk right it is actually a poem about the journey of life about the important decisions that that you make about the important confusions that you face in life uh, the dilemmas that you have in life it is a it is a poem which is very profound in nature it's a very deep poem right it's not a very surface level very shallow sort of a poem so uh, it represents the roads not only represent two different ways like i told you they also represent the different life decisions that one has to make the two roads diverged in a yellow wood to symbolize a person's life and the narrator's choice about which road to take uh, it represents the different decisions we sometimes have to make and how those decisions will affect the future sometimes we don't even know what is going to happen in the future but we still make those decisions in our life and we don't even know if we will be able to come back to it is the poem relevant to today's society you can pause the video right now and you can read all of this uh, i would want to say that poem is uh, this poem is really relevant in today's society because uh, there are many times when we come to uh, such points in life such um, instances such times where we have to make really difficult choices in life and those difficult choices will define the the way our future will be will define the kind of person that we will become will define the kind of um, uh, uh, life that we will have ahead of us so it is very important to stop to think to give it a thought and to choose the right path for us it is very important to not just take every decision casually but to think about the decisions that we are going to take in life right uh, so this is it that's how we complete this poem i hope you all understood it thank you